What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Thanks for tuning in as always. Today we're going to take the tunalizer and do a little bit more work on the bench. We're this time we're going to jump into some of our more tunable motors. These are two 21.5 XC Run V10 G4 motors. We're going to test them on our tunalizer and talk about what the numbers mean and how you pick your better motor. So first things first, I did open one of these up already because I got anxious and I was very excited to open the motor, so I did that. But this kind of counts as an unboxing as well. And you get your instruction manual, sweet sensor harness, and I love these boxes. I'm sure you all know that by now. All right, so we have two 21.5 XC Run motors. We're going to run these both on our tunalizer in the auto mode. I'm going to have this set up for... Uh, the one cell voltage just to keep things a little quieter, lower RPM. Now you got to be very careful when you connect these guys. Make sure they're in the right order. The speed control inside of the tunalizer does have some protections, but you don't want to rely on that. So just make sure you pay attention when you're hooking up your motor. Auto test. This is a two-pole motor. Turn-based motors are two-pole. KV-based motors are four-pole when you're getting in there. Hit enter. And it starts to do the test. The auto test runs the motor at a couple different RPMs. And then when it gets done, it gives you this information. So it tells you your test voltage, the current of the test, the KV rating of the motor, the actual measured end bell timing, and then you see the variance in the three sensors that are in there. And then if you go down a screen, you see your end bell deviation, which is the offset or the difference in the previous degree settings, the rotor asymmetry, which is how equally charged it is, your hall signal deviation, which is the consistency of the hall sensor strength, and then of course test temperatures as well. So I'm going to take this information and punch this into the spreadsheet. And so just for the sake of consistency, the last video that I did like this, we did each motor twice. So I'm going to do that again, and we're just going to run this guy uh, back to back. So this is that same motor. All right, so we're gonna go plug these guys, and it looks pretty much almost exactly the same, which is good by me. So we're gonna go plug this into the spreadsheet. Be right so that does it, that's motor number one. I'm just gonna use a black marker and write a number one right there. That's clever. That's just so I can keep them separated for now. Eventually, they're gonna get proper stickers. Now we're gonna take motor number two, hook that up, and run the exact same tests. All right, go back over here, hit auto test. And away it goes. All right, so test voltage is the same. Amps are a little higher. KV is about the same. And bell stuff is pretty similar. We're real close to the same here. I'm going to go punch this in the spreadsheet. Again, this here. is motor number two. We're going to run the test one more time. I know these, these auto tests are so exciting. All right. And as we can see, very, very similar. They're not going to be identical because the device is very accurate. So you're going to get some variances from run to run. But I'm going to go punch this in the spreadsheet and then we so get to the So here we have the data points all plugged into my handy dandy spreadsheet. And I also have one that I add on here that is KV per amp, where I take the KV number and I divide that by the amp draw as just an additional data point. Um, I did talk to the engineer a little bit about my fantasy number, and he says that it can be a little bit misleading. It doesn't show a, a complete picture, I guess you'd say, of what, what's going on with the motor, but it does just basically show you an RPM per amp. I just like to use it as a reference point because it can help you just have another piece of data to deal with when you're comparing motors over time. Or let's say, for example, I'm going to test these motors again. And I'll have another baseline to look at for, and it helps you tell the degradation of the rotor. As the rotor gets weaker, you're going to get more RPM, but you're also probably going to get more amp draw. So this helps us pinpoint that. But what we're really looking at here 
is the basics on the symmetry and the deviations down here. Overall, you always want these numbers to be lower. So when you're comparing two motors, the one that has the lower numbers, like on this side, is going to be better than the one that has the higher numbers, obviously. And you can see that reflects, and they have very similar KVs for the most part. You could throw a blanket across those KV numbers. And this one does those KVs at a lower amp draw, which again, ties back to this KV per amp number that I like to deal with. So this is what it would look like if you were to take a couple motors, do a couple runs on them. And as you can see, the two runs are pretty similar. There's not going to make a huge difference. I just like to run everything twice to show how accurate the tunalizer is. Um, but in this situation, the motor number one is just oh so slightly better than motor number two. Not a huge difference, but if you're splitting hairs, racing over, looking for that little edge, that sort of thing. And then what I like to do is, is take this information, I save these spreadsheets and I mark these motors, and I can come back and test my motors after they've been used for a while or if I overheat them and compare and see if anything's changing, getting worse, or you know maybe even getting better. Another thing to note about your tunalizer, it does more than just motor testing it is also a bluetooth module for your speed control if you have xc run series of speed controls or the max series of speed controls you can actually connect this to the speed control using this little port on the end and a double-ended harness uh, like so plug that into the programming port on your speed control and use the hw link v2 app in your phone or tablet to do speed control settings so some bonuses there in addition this also that port can be used to do speed control testing as well if you need to do bench top speed control testing you don't have a radio or whatever the case may be, you don't have a receiver yet, you can use this to hook up a speed control. You can calibrate it to the throttle. Like a, use it like a servo tester type of deal. In addition, there's a manual motor test. So if you just want to go in here and run the motor up and down, uh, you can do that. You have throttle output here, and it gives you all the same data. It just doesn't do the, um, the second screen that's, that's from the auto test. And throttle output is for when you do the speed control testing, you can see forward and reverse. So when you hook that up and then in the settings, you can set uh, the number of pulls as well as the test voltage, brightness and the language, all that fun stuff. You can change the rotation if you check, need to check reverse rotation motors. You can turn the beeping on and off, reset your speed control, and then or reset the presets and also get your updates and all that right there. Uh, this does also work on multi-pole motors. Uh, you can see you can go tons and tons and tons of poles, and that's so you get the correct RPM information and all that. And it does sensorless motors as well. It'll do, it doesn't give you all the same information. Obviously, there's no sensors to give you that information, so you only get the KV and the amp draw. But it also works with non-hobbywing uh, motors. We get asked ask that all the time. Does this work on regular motors? And I did see a comment come up. Does it work on brush motors? No, it does not work on brush motors. It only works on brushless and, uh, like I said, censored or censorless. I'd like to remind everybody that we do have a podcast. We do a bi-monthly podcast. It's the first and third Friday of the month, and each and every episode, we give away free RC stuff. Just look up our podcast on your favorite podcast podcast service. It's called RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing, and you can listen to Enter to Win. And like always, folks, thanks for tuning in. Another fresh episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.